Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. This story is the greatest story I've ever told on this channel. When I saw the story last night, I actually called people and was telling them about it. <laughs> Highway and David both sent it to me, and it combines everything we love so much. And when you hear the headline, you're going to go, okay, I can see how that could be a good story. It gets better. Headline from the Orange County Register out of California. Truck driver gets half a million dollars for wrongful arrest by San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies. Half a million dollars for a wrongful arrest. Now, there's a lot of truck drivers in my audience, a lot of truck drivers. Many of them right now are going, Steve, thank you so much. It's good to hear a great result for a truck driver. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. Tony Saavedra wrote this. San Bernardino County Supervisors agreed Tuesday to pay a half a million dollars to a truck driver who was arrested because he made a snide remark <laughs> to a deputy during a delivery. The guy was on the job and he encountered some police and the police didn't like his attitude and it appears they arrested him for that. And now someone's paying. Deputies tried to question the man who is from Mesa, Arizona back in 2019 and they said they suspected him of loitering behind a supermarket. Now you might ask yourself, Steve, are you telling me that truck drivers got legitimate business behind a supermarket? <laughs> You see, you and I both know that. It escaped the attention of law enforcement as to why he might be back there. So he refused to answer questions they were asking of him and wouldn't identify himself. And so they arrested him and they said that he was resisting arrest and that he'd been loitering. And now many people will say, Steve, if, if they come up to you and arrest you for resisting arrest, that's kind of circular. But the underlying arrest they claimed was for loitering, loitering. But a federal jury didn't buy that, and they awarded the man $375,000 for the wrongful arrest. But here's where it gets better. With the potential for more damages, and I believe what was happening here was that the man got a lawyer, filed a lawsuit, they went to trial, the jury came back and said, we award $375,000 for actual damages. And it's going to be one of those situations where they're then able to tack on more for punitive damages. Uh, and also, the court can also award attorney fees and court costs in these cases, I suspect, because it's a federal claim that might allow for those. And so you have a situation where the Board of Supervisors goes, wait a second, if they gave him 375 actual damages, what's he going to get in punies, as we call them, in, in the business? Punies, okay? So there you go. So the County Board of Supervisors resolved the case by approving a settlement, which the man and his attorney said they will accept, of half a million dollars. So that explains why you have a jury verdict of 375 and a settlement for half a million dollars. Here's the story. The man was making a delivery to a Winco supermarket in Apple Valley, and he parked his tractor trailer in the rear loading dock, which presumably is because he needs to unload some stuff. <laughs> now, again... This is not that complicated. You and I understand this perfectly. And I'm not a truck driver. So he parked at the loading dock. He then walked around to the front of the store to let the management know that he was there. And he purchased some muffins. And the muffins actually come into play here. Because the man then starts walking back around to his truck and he's eating the muffins. And that's what you do with muffins when you buy them. Truck driver or not. Okay. As he's walking back to his truck with a clipboard in one hand and muffins in the other, he was stopped by county sheriff's deputies and they asked him what he was doing. He responded, walking. Now, here's the thing. If you ask somebody a question and they answer it truthfully, you really shouldn't get upset about that. But we all know, we've all heard the stories, and we may have even encountered it from time to time, where a police officer might ask you, what you're doing. And that's a loaded question because they're hinting that they think you're doing something wrong and they want you to explain yourself. But they don't say, explain yourself. They go, what are you doing? And the guy goes, uh, I'm walking. Which, by the way, is a truthful answer. He was walking. Um, 
I'll tell you a story in a second. Deputies asked the man for his identification, but he refused. And then he claimed he was being illegally detained because they told him he couldn't leave. So the manifest for the delivery was in plain sight on his clipboard. He had a clipboard in his hand, and it went with the truck, with what was in the truck that was being delivered. And the logo of the company was on the manifest, and the logo of the company is on the truck. So now, if you were like Sherlock Holmes, you might be able to figure this out and go, wait a second. There's a logo on that manifest and a logo on that truck. The man with the manifest is walking towards the truck. There might be a correlation between these two things. There could be. Now, the lawsuit said a deputy told the man he was being detained for loitering, to which he responded, how can I be loitering if I'm walking? That's a good question. And we've talked before about what loitering means, what loafing means, because some post offices have a sign saying no loitering, no loafing, implying they're two different things. Uh, And so how could you be loitering if you were walking? So he then asked them to speak to a supervisor. Now, I see this a lot on uh, videos on YouTube where someone gets pulled over by the police and they demand to speak to a supervisor. They say, okay, we'll get you a supervisor. Nine times out of 10, a supervisor will come out and say, well, what's going on? And the officer tells him, they go, okay, same, same thing. I agree with this person. But if a supervisor had shown up, I suspect this one would have gone differently. A supervisor would have said, what's your, what's your problem, sir? And he'd say, well, I'm a truck driver, just dropped off a load of stuff, and uh, these guys are harassing me, saying I'm loitering when I'm just doing my job. And a supervisor might have said, oh, that's your manifest that goes with that truck, and that's your truck? Okay, and a supervisor might have said, you know, guys, come on, mellow out. Or if the supervisor had piled on, maybe he would have gotten more damages. (laughs) But (laughs) he asked three times to speak to a supervisor. The deputy replied that he was being hostile, and they handcuffed him. So asking for a supervisor got him handcuffed, and they ratcheted them painfully tight, according to the filings filed by his attorney. Deputies argued that while holding muffins and a clipboard, he had taken a fighting stance. A fighting stance. Now, here's the thing. The question always is, is what is a fighting stance? Did he actually put up his dukes like the the Notre Dame guy? Or did he simply turn himself and and square his shoulders towards somebody? And, And so a fighting stance was used as the excuse for why they handcuffed the man. But remember that he still had his muffins and his clipboard in his hands. So if you think a guy who's holding muffins that he's eating is going to fight you without putting them down first, I don't think you understand what muffins are. So the lawsuit said it was apparent to Mr. Franks that both deputies' decision to arrest him and to apply the handcuffs in an excessively tight manner were in retaliation for Mr. Franks' verbal protests and for Mr. Frank's request to speak with a supervisor. So that's what they argue happened. And apparently a jury believed that and bought that too. The sheriff's department declined to comment on Tuesday. So again, like I always say, I wasn't there. But a jury heard the evidence and said, cut that man a check for $375,000 after hearing the evidence in this case. So here is my favorite part of the story. Gather the kids round the device you're on right now. And you're going to react the same way I did. Because while sitting in the back of the patrol car, Franks asked the deputy, and this is a quote, Is it hard to breathe with your head that far up your ass? The deputy responded by grabbing Franks' beanie from his head. So (laughs) he was apparently wearing a hat. And he asked from the back of the patrol car, Is it hard to breathe with your head that far up your ass? The police officer reached back and grabbed his hat in disgust. Meanwhile, his attorney points out this man did nothing wrong. Did nothing wrong. He was doing his job, encountered the police. They ask him, what are you doing? He says, walking. They stop him. They're bothering him some more. When they won't let him go, he goes, guys, this is an illegal detainment. Maybe you should get a supervisor out here who can explain it to you. Meanwhile, he's got the muffin in one hand and the manifest clipboard in the other hand, and they decide to arrest him because they say that he's hostile and he's taking a fighting stance, and then he was resisting arrest 
when they crank those handcuffs down. And when they load them in the back of the car, he asks them rhetorically, is it hard to breathe with your head that far up your ass? Now, I'm an attorney. And I like to point out to people, if you're in a situation, sometimes it's best just to keep quiet. But legally speaking, you're allowed to talk and you've got a freedom of speech. And so the interesting thing is that there's no law against asking a police officer or a sheriff's deputy, is it hard to breathe with your head that far up your ass? That's a perfectly legal question for you to ask or a statement for you to make, because I don't think he's looking for an answer on that one. But his attorney points out he did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. So he does say, and he's joking here, my guy is dumb enough to think he has rights. (laughs) It is not a crime in the state of California to refuse to identify yourself to a cop, even if they have a legal reason to detain you. And you should also point out that here the man was on foot. He was not behind the wheel. So if a police officer pulls you over in your car, and says you're speeding, let me see your driver's license. Yeah, you got to identify yourself. But he's walking through a parking lot or around a building, and he's on foot, and they ask him who he is. That's a whole different thing. So he spent the night in jail, was released on his own recognizance the next day. He later was charged with resisting arrest, but the district attorney's office dropped the case because of insufficient evidence. And when you hear insufficient evidence in a situation like this, what the DA is saying is there's no case here. They're not saying that, oh, we would have had a case if the officers only had done a better job of, like, recording what happened. The DA is looking at it going, there's no evidence the man did this. It's a weak story. It's a weak story. So it's a very, very good story from our viewpoint for entertainment purposes, but there's actually some important stuff happening here also. And that is the fact that the guy's just doing his job (laughs) <laughs> he encounters some surly deputies who don't like his truthful answer to the question, what are you doing? Uh, a couple of years ago, I went back to a town that I, I'd lived in for a while and was visiting with friends, and there was a pizza parlor there. And, and the pizza parlor does a big carryout business, huge carryout business. And I know the owner of the business. I've known the guy who owns that business for decades, a friend of mine. And uh, went by one, one evening when I was in town with a bunch of my friends. We all know the owner. Some of us live right within walking distance of that place. Talked the owner for a while. Started getting busy. And so we said, okay, cool. We ordered some pizza to go, carry out. And we walked around out into the parking lot. And at the edge of the parking lot is a low brick wall. And one of us had parked a car up against that as a parking spot. So we all walked back there. We put the pizza box on the wall, opened it up, and we're eating our pizza. And a police officer rolls up. And what does he ask us? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Now, again, I'm not a detective. I'm not Sherlock Holmes, but I was there. So he rolls up and he goes, what are you guys doing? And uh, I held up a piece of pizza and I go, We're eating pizza. And he goes, why are you doing that here? And we go, "Uh, pizza place is right there. And uh, we're just talking and eating pizza. And he goes, well, you need to move along. And he got in his car and he left. And we're just looking around going like, what? And now here's the thing. He didn't stand there and make us move along. He didn't threaten us with anything, but he comes up and goes, what are you guys doing? We tell him, and he goes, you guys need to move along. No, we don't. No, no. And I know some of you are going to say, Steve, I've seen it before a parking lot where it says no loitering or no loafing. Number one, this parking lot had no such signs. Number two, I know the owner of the business. I assure you, if the officer had walked in and said, hey, there's a guy named Steve Leto out there eating pizza. My friend would have said, oh, tell him I said hi. (laughs) <laughs> he wouldn't say arrest that man. And I don't know why it is, because again, I, I I know I do a lot of stories that police are involved in. So some I've actually had some people say, Steve, you're always picking on the police. Not always. Um, I've had police officers thank me for the video I put up about how to behave during a traffic stop. I've actually gotten emails as recently as last week from somebody who says, Steve, I'm a police officer. Thank you for putting up that video. So I, I just, when I see stories that are entertaining, I bring them out here, especially if they have a legal angle to them. 
But for some odd reason, there are people drawn into the profession of being law enforcement who shouldn't be in law enforcement. And so the guy, when he rolls up on us, goes, what are you guys doing? And I go, eating pizza. He goes, well, you guys need to get, you know, get going, move along. Why? It's not your parking lot. Now, I bet you if you'd asked him, why did you say that to the group of adults behind the, it's kind of around the corner from the pizza place, but it was on the property of the pizza place. Why did you say that to those guys? He'd probably say, well, you know, in the past we've had problems with kids in parking lots hanging out where they shouldn't or something. But if you come around a corner and there's four kids behind a building sitting there up to no good, like on their skateboards, possibly, you know, ingesting substances or who knows doing what, I don't know. But here we have, it was adults. It was four adults. And all of us were actually professionals, meaning that we all have jobs. And um, one of my friends who was with me that night actually after the cop left, said, um, if that had escalated, you'd represent me, right? And I said, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> I was the only attorney in the group. But it wasn't like we're a bunch of pimply-faced teens out underneath the bleachers starting a fire. We were clearly eating pizza in the parking lot of the pizza place where I know the owner. And the owner would have said, he is absolutely welcome to eat pizza back there. I know he would have said that if asked. So, we all know what happened here, even though we weren't there. And that gigantic jury award suggests that this man's version of events is true. So again, a truck driver got a half a million dollars for wrongful arrest by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies. That was a settlement after the first portion of the trial ended with a jury award of $375,000 for wrongful arrest. And it could have gone up and the county board said, no, let's end it right now. We'll pay you half a mil. Take it? Okay. And by the way, just so you remember the quote that we all need to remember, is it hard to breathe with your head that far up your ass? <laughs> Highway and David both said it. Orange County Register published it. I would argue with you that that is the greatest story I've ever had on this channel. And I'm prepared to argue with you about it if you disagree. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Sometimes the most profound of awakenings come wrapped in the quietest of moments.